God is awesome. My God is awesome. We can move on to it.
say thank you. It's, it's a good thing. They ain't being good to somebody they can't even say thank you. God, I don't want to be good. God, thank you, God. I don't deserve it, but thank you, God. Thank you, God. Can't stand opening the door for somebody. They walk through and don't say thank you. God, I thank you for the doors. I thank you for the doors you open, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. I can't repay you, but thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hey, man, let's look at this word today. Let's look at Luke chapter 18. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. This is what the scripture says. One day... Jesus told his disciples a story to illustrate their need for constant prayer and to show them that they must never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who was a godless man with great contempt for everyone. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly appealing for justice against someone who had harmed her. The judge ignored her for a while, but eventually she wore him out. I fear neither God nor man, he said to himself, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. Right. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this evil judge. Yes, Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who plead with him day and night? Will he keep putting them on? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when I, the Son of Man, return, how many will I find who have faith? The title of today's word is, Can You Hear Me Now? Can You Hear Me Now? A lack of discipline and commitment will keep you less than. Yes, sir. Lack of discipline and commitment will keep you less than. Yes, sir. What does he mean? Okay, I'm going to explain it to you. So God has this ordained for your life. I mean, he's already wrote your name on it. He's already reserved it for you. All you got to do is put in your part, and it's yours. All right, all right. But a lack of discipline and commitment will keep you less than what God has ordained in your life. Uh -huh. He says, I know the, the plans that I have for you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, all of us are created in the image of God. God has wonderful plans specifically designed for our lives. We're literally in the image of God. We're little G's. We're little gods walking around here. And God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. But it just don't come like that. There's some conditions that we have to, to meet. There's some work that we have to, to put in, uh -huh. and then God does his part. He comes through. If he makes a promise, I tell you, he's not a man that he should lie. There's no reason for him to lie. He makes a promise that we do our part. Uh -huh. But a lack of discipline and commitment, let me make it real plain for you. Let's say we see the scripture where God desires for us to be healthy. But if I don't have the discipline to be healthy and to exercise, do the things that I need to do to take care of this temple, God's desire and 
plan and design is for me to be up here healthy. Uh -huh. But if I'm not disciplined, yeah. my health will be down here. Yeah. All right. Less than God has designed for my life. Uh -huh. All right. God desires in our marriages. God desires for our marriages to be beautiful support one another and we're there for one another constant a constant another another part of you that's there to hold you up when you're weak mm -hmm. but if we don't discipline ourselves the bible says when a man that, that it says that it says when, when, when a man and a woman did they said i have to leave my father and my mother when i'm married mm -hmm. and i gotta hold on to my wife uh -huh. if i still want to be a mama's boy mm -hmm. while i'm married even though God has ordained and designed for my marriage to have me up here and for my marriage to be, to be something that's for our solid, that can, that's a good example for our children, my marriage will end up down here because I don't have the discipline to be what God has called me to be and do what God has called me to do. It's not God's desire for us to be impoverished and in debt. There's some issues that we go through, but God is able to deliver them. All right. All right. But if I don't have the discipline to manage my finances, yeah. and everything that shines, I gotta have it. Everything that you got, I gotta have it. If I don't have the discipline to know what God has ordained for my life, yeah. My little bit that he can really bless and make it seem like a lie. All right, all right. He can't deal with it up here because I don't have the discipline to conduct my finances in an orderly fashion. You got it. Discipline and commitment. Where's commitment? Commitment is that I don't just do it today, but I keep doing it. I do it because I'm sold out to, let me tell you, a real a real good example of commitment. Everybody, well, I just talked to you about health, so. All right, just pretend I had to just talk to you about health. All right. <laughs> and so, there's some of us, I'm not going to ask for hands, but, but really love bacon. I ain't talking about the turkey. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the hog. All right. But when it comes to the breakfast. Yes, sir. The chicken really didn't make a commitment in that thing. The chicken pushed out an egg and went on about their business. But the hog? The hog was committed. The hog laid down his life. For the, that, that's, that's commitment to breakfast right there. I'm not just making a donation. But I, and, 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 and life, we don't just make donations. We make commitments to God. We don't throw stuff at God and walk on about, God, I give you me. I give you me, God. Use me as you please, God. I'm going to throw my stuff at God and walk on about my business. And, and as God sets standards and give us, gives us direction in life, I don't just do it today and then I slack off tomorrow. All right. I have to be committed to what God has called me to be. Amen. I told my, to a quick story, my wife, she, um, we were in the house. I think it was Monday or Friday or Saturday Friday. And um, so we were back on the, 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 the little, this little porch here in the back. And so um, Bella, now, yeah, Bella said, um, now the man at the door, now the man at the door. And we just opened the back just chilling. And, um, and right now she's riding a tricycle around the house. And, um, and we heard, Bella, now the man at the door. So, why is that man at the door? We had the now way down in the retention pond. There's no, there's no water, it's like people play in there, walking dogs. Um, I was like, oh Jesus. <laughs> but still, I was like, oh Jesus. Now the way out, she didn't see a family with a dog and two kids, and I ran out the door, and out there in the retention pond. So I go out there, and so the people out there, you know, they nice, hello, hello, sir, how you doing? They got their little kids, got their dog, but me, Sean, knew what I was going to do. So I need, to, I need to teach her lesson. You don't do that. You can, you can, you can, if what if Bella wouldn't have seen that? And so I needed her to know how serious that was. So the first thing Sean said when she seen me going there, well, I'm going to do this in front of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this in front of these people. I'm going to do this. 
And you know, she a judge, and so she she looking out for making she don't want me to appear before her. And so she wrong to do this in front of these people and I I calmed down. I, I didn't do it what I would have did, uh, but I still had to put that bottom. And and when I heard, don't you do that again, you know, tap that little bottom. I wasn't gonna hurt it anyway, but I just need for her to know, you know, they they're more hurt by the fact that Papa had to put that bottom and then what it felt like. And um, but 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 in my commitment, I can't let other folk determine how I raise my children. Amen. And these are my children, these are my grandchildren. But I still take the same seriousness. I'm committed. This is what I feel like needs to be done. And so I'm gonna listen to the advice of my wife, but I still need to pat that bottom so they know right then, because I don't want you to get in the house and forget why I'm doing it. I need to pat you right there. So that you know that, that you have to be committed, you have to be consistent. And a lack of discipline and commitment puts us in a place of less than. In verse 1, this is what the scripture says. It says, one day Jesus told his disciples a story to illustrate their need for constant prayer and to show them that they must never give up. Jesus told the disciples a story specifically for two reasons. There's only two reasons why he told this story. The first reason he said is you got to always pray. You got to always pray. You, you can't go through life with, 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 without depending on prayer. Because prayer lets you know what the next action ought to be. If you go into an action and you didn't pray, you could be all in the wrong area doing the wrong thing. And he says the first thing you got to do is always pray. And he says and the second thing that I'm telling you in this story that I need, I need you to understand because, because y'all got a work to do. And I'm not going to always be here to hold your hand. Remember that you always pray, but the next reason I'm telling you is never give up. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. Never give up. I don't care what folks say about you. Never give up. I, I don't care how folks look at you or look down on you. Never give up. He says if you ever get to the place to where you give up, you'll be in a place of less than. I would think so much more for you, but you gave up. You, you got tired. You, you gave up. He says never give up. And then in verse 2, he goes on and, and he says in, in the scripture, he says, there was a judge in a certain city, um, he said, who, who was a godless man with, with great contempt for everyone. He said, there was a person that was literally in a position of authority that appeared to be able to have control over your life, had control over how you maneuver through this world, had, had control over and he says that he said that this person was an authority but could care less about God or people. And you know what? We deal with people like that today. And sometimes it gets so frustrating, folk want to give up. Folk know there are folk that, that we wonder why the voter turn out so low. Some folk just say it don't matter. It just don't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to, it doesn't even matter if I go and do it. I, folk gonna do what they want to do. The last election we had, it didn't matter what you did. I, there were some folk that wanted to win so bad I, that they adjusted things and worked with things and, and did crooked things just to win. And some folk look at that and say that there are people in authority that's gonna do what they want to do all the time and get what they want to get. And it doesn't matter what God says. I, I'm not concerned with the people. I, I'm not concerned with how godly they are or God this they are. He said, what I'm concerned with is you can never give up. Your determination should not be based on whether people love you or, or whether people love God. Your commitment and your discipline should not be based on how people act. It should be based on something that's on the inside of you. He said that this judge, uh, he said that he was a godless man and he had great contempt for everyone, didn't care about anyone, but he was in a position of power. And then he goes on in verse 3 and, and, and he says in the scripture, and there was a widow of that city that came to him repeatedly appealing for justice against someone 
who had harmed her. And so this man happens to be sitting in a seat of authority. And there was a widow woman. She had already lost her husband. And she, 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 she was by herself. And, and someone had done an injustice against her. And she went to this man who had the power to, to bring justice to, against that person who had done her wrong. And, but he, it would be already say that, that he could care less about her God. And he could care less about him. And he said she came to him repeatedly appealing for justice. And I can just see this woman going before this judge and saying that someone did me wrong. I should have been treated better. I made it an image of God. I should be looked upon better. I should not be treated like this. I can see this woman going to this judge asking for justice and the judge not caring about her God or even her. And telling her no. And sometimes in this world, we have to deal with people that don't appear to care about our humanity, don't appear to care about what the Word of God says about us. But can I tell you that we're not doing it for them? When we go for before authorities and say, you can't keep killing our boys, you can't keep killing our people, you can't keep doing it wrong, when we go before them and complain. She went back home and she began to pray. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. I've been done wrong. And justice is on your on my side, God. You demanded, God, and told me that I'm created in your image. God, I'm going to trust you. I can see her going back again. And he said, no. And I can see this woman not being deterred, but going back into her prayer closet and saying, God, my grandson was killed and folk won't they, they will not uh, do what's right and bring justice uh, and she went and prayed to God uh, and went back before the judge uh, and the judge said no uh, I can see this woman uh, standing like Rosa Parks uh, saying you know what uh, I deserve because of who I am uh, to be able to sit anywhere anyone else sits uh, on this bus uh, and they said no uh, I can see this woman uh, being like Dr. King uh, saying that we deserve sit at the counters uh, of the restaurants in St. Augustine, Florida, uh, and going to, and he said, no, uh, I can see Dr. Hill and uh, leading young folk down the street, uh, saying we deserve uh, to be able to go on the beaches, uh, we deserve uh, to be able to get in the pools, uh, just like everyone else, uh, and Brock coming and pouring acid uh, in the water, uh, and the judge saying, no, uh, I can just see this woman uh, going back and saying, God, of the one that appears to control the blessing they say no say no to the job say no to the advancement say no to the application say no to your dreams and no to your desires but God told me to tell you today the same way you prayed before you went here you go back home get on your knees you talk to God and show up the next day She was unwilling to accept any decision short of justice. Ain't no compromise when it comes to justice. There's no compromise when it comes to giving me what God has ordained for my life. If God says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, if you treat me any different, I'm not going to compromise. I'm going to demand that you treat me child of God. Somebody see it. Somebody see it. If the Bible says, husband, love your wives. Wives, let me tell you, there's no 
Sing, God, it make me in his image. 